whitetail season started with plenty of young buck movement to hold my interest and keep me entertained. After hearing some commotion on a ridge behind me, a big doe appeared. Just like that, she's down. Closed captioning in today's episode is brought to you by the Nut. Well, that happened pretty fast. <laughs> I sat for a little while and I was kind of thinking maybe nothing was going to happen. <laughs> and then, uh, all of a sudden I heard a noise and turned my, my head quick like that and there was a doe running along, big fat doe, beautiful. And she had her mouth open, um, panting and that, so right away I thought, okay, she's being chased. So I start looking for a buck and I hear a rattling up on the ridge way up behind me. Um, it sounded breaking branches and everything, they were going at it pretty good. So I kind of held off and I waited and waited, but she calmed right down. I bleated to her because she was going to leave. And, uh, but she calmed right back down and she stopped looking back there and she kind of, you know, wasn't really displaying, uh, behavior of being chased. So I thought, well, my wife said to get a, a nice big dough for the freezer. So I thought, well, this is a perfect opportunity. To try out the new, uh, PSE Warhammer crossbow. Man, oh man, did it ever do the job nicely. So she didn't go 20 yards, she's right over there dead. So I'm gonna get down here, uh, lower the bow down, get all my stuff packed up and uh, head over and, and uh, have a look at her and get the tag on her and get her out of here. My wife who was nearby was happy to put her tag on this doe and help with filming the recovery. The two young bucks that I had heard sparring earlier decided to make an appearance while I was trying to get down out of the stand.
here she is. As you can see, great big doe. Boat killed me getting it out of there. <laughs> but now we can get to it. Uh, she came in there this morning. Uh, you know, it's one of these bird in the hand kind of things. Uh, I wanted to shoot one with the war hammer, see what the performance was like. Well, I got to tell you, the performance is ama amazing. Um, blasted right through her shoulder, right through both lungs, cut the top of her heart rate off. Uh, I mean, she went 20 yards and crashed uh, at a dead run. I know uh, everybody's going to be really happy with the meat. Um, everybody always uh, prefers the doe meat, of course. Next week is the shotgun hunt, and uh, give that a try. And who knows, maybe one of those or someone bigger might just wander in and uh, get a, I'll get a whack at one of them. Now that the war hammer has had its chance, we'll put the Canuck to work. dim light of dawn, several bucks treated me to a show, competing for the same hot dough. <clears throat> Loud challenge grunts and soft nasal tending grunts filled the creek bottom. See something good right there. <laughs> Beautiful. I come right back out to the quad trail too. You gotta love that. Man oh man. Let's have a look at this baby. Oh, there he is. Nice big eight. Heavy neck, mature buck. He, they were chasing does down in here this morning. I made a couple of calls, and as you saw, this guy kind of doubled back and come at me through the trees there a little bit, stopped at 20 yards, and then uh, made a clean shot. You know, I mean, in the end, it worked out really well. Ran about 60 yards and dropped. Um, he's uh, got all kinds of stuff in here. I see all kinds of rubs around here. He's got all kinds of bark in his in his burrs and everything, and his and his antlers so he's been rubbing and chasing i think there was actually two maybe three bucks in here this morning that were chasing after the same does uh this guy happened to make the fatal mistake of coming back to when i called to him and uh stopped at 20 yards broadside and those score slugs and that canuck shotgun man oh man did it ever do the job this portion of today's episode is brought to you by pse archery welcome back guys to my favorite part of the show. This is the part where I get to, to try some of Becky's cooking. Uh, this is my good friend, Becky Doosling, and she's agreed to come in and uh, once again, show us some of her uh, great recipes. Today, we're gonna do the venison that you saw us take uh, on the hunt. I'm excited to see what Becky's got in store for us. Okay, well, thanks for having me again. And today we're gonna start with our venison roast. And we're going to make a honey ginger venison stir fry. So I'm gonna show you uh, how to prepare the meat first and we'll take it from there. As you can see, I've kind of trimmed off all the silver skin and the fat as much as I can. So I kind of had to disassemble it a little bit, but that's okay. You wanna get all of that off because it's not digestible and it could basically tow a boat, okay? So what we're gonna do here is 
slice it nice and thin. It's a little bit slippery, so I might just even open this whole bad boy up and go like this. Okay, so it's a beautiful roast. Like, you, you can see that. It's really nice. I'm just going to slice this nice and thin. Now, these are going to shrink up when we cook them, but if you want to keep them big, you can. Like, that's, it's kind of, I'd say like three-fourths of an inch maybe. This is what it looks like when it's all diced up, chopped up, and ready to go. And I've marinated it overnight. If you don't have overnight, that's okay. You can do a few hours, but it's best if you can. So what I marinated this in is soy sauce, uh, sesame oil, and a little bit of rice vinegar, ginger, and garlic, and that's all. So it's not something that you have to measure. You just have to toss it all in. I did a sprinkle of the soy sauce, of the sesame oil, of the rice vinegar, and, and you can see it's been in here overnight. It smells amazing. Lots of garlic. I probably put six cloves. You can put more, you can put less. It's totally up to your taste, okay? I'm just going to make a sauce very similar to that that we're going to actually cook our vegetables in and our meat all at the same time. So I'm going to pour some soya sauce in here, okay? And sauce is good, so if you make too much, that's okay because it's going to be absorbed by the rice. This is sesame oil. If you don't have sesame oil, you're probably thinking this is a lot of stuff you might not have. You can substitute it. You can use a regular oil. You can use a regular vinegar. It's going to be fine. Like an extra virgin olive oil? Yep. You can use a vegetable oil, an olive oil, um, rice, rice vinegar. If you don't have that, just use an apple cider vinegar. We'll put a little in there. We'll just do that. This is cornstarch. I'm going to put a, just a little bit because that'll just kind of help thicken it up. This is just ground ginger. If you have fresh ginger, feel free to use it. Sprinkle lots of that. It's good stuff. This is a little bit of um, chili and garlic paste. You, I'm not going to put a lot because I'm, I'm, other people are going to try this, but if you like it spicy, you just go right ahead and, and you stir that in. I also have a hoisin sauce, just a store-bought. Okay? Uh, hoisin sauce is essentially like a, like a black bean sauce that you can find in any grocery store. And I'm going to... I'm going to put a generous amount because I like it. It just adds to the flavor. And so we're just going to whisk that up and kind of get it all blended together. Lastly, I'm going to put a little bit of honey, but I might use the honey again later just to kind of give it a sweetness, okay? All right, and now we're going to start with our cooking. We're actually going to get cooking. This portion of today's episode is brought to you by Bergera. Our barrels make the difference. All right, I'm going to start by taking a little bit of the sesame oil and putting it in this pan. I've been heating it up a little bit. And then I'm going to start frying up our little strips of venison, okay? So it's gonna take a few minutes. You don't wanna crowd it, but... Let me get this going. Okay, so as you can see, I've got a whole roast in here. So I'm gonna just do it in two batches, just so we don't crowd it and crank this up a touch. So you can eat venison uh, rare if you like to, and these are cut pretty thin, so they should cook, cook fairly quickly, okay? So you can see they're kind of cooking up nice. You don't have to get it brown or anything like that. Like, I mean, uh, like seared. We're just cooking it up quick because it's going to go back in after when we do our vegetables. So because I cut off all that silver skin and the fat, I think they, every piece should be tender. Yeah, I think that's a kind of a key with a lot of a lot of venison, or not just venison, but any wild game, is to try and and get rid of all that silver skin and any of that sinew or uh, or you know ligament or anything like that that you find in the cuts because uh, that's that's as she said that's in, it's inedible, it's undigestible, and it's it, I think it turns people off a lot of times. Um, whereas if you have uh, if you clean all that up and get it all out of there. Um, you're, it's a much more pleasurable experience when you're eating it. What I have here, I've got some red pepper, some snap peas, and some broccoli that I almost dumped over. Um, you can use anything that you like. I just happen, happen to like this. You could use mushrooms, you can use anything that suits you. So, I'm going to put our peppers and our broccoli in. Kind of get that going. And the heat's fairly high because you kind of you want to cook them um, quick, but uh, not totally mush them. I'll throw these in, I guess. And these are water chestnuts. I just like those for a little bit of crunch. 
It's going to be a healthy dish too. This is something that you can feel good about eating. Yeah, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just want to make sure whatever oil that you use uh, has a high um, heat temperature, right? That you could, you know, that will take the heat because you can see like my little bits of, of uh, garlic are kind of getting charred there. It gets pretty hot. I've also got some fresh garlic. You know my rule, you can't have too much garlic. So we'll put some in there and get that going. Now I might throw a lid on this just to kind of steam it before we put the sauce in and really thicken that up and, and cook everything. Okay, so I'm gonna add some of that sauce that we made and I'll put the lid back on in a minute. So there's our sauce. I'm gonna kind of make a little spot in the center for it. Yeah, there's a technique. She's not just dumping the sauce in, she's making a pocket for it and making spreading little... it evenly. And... Yeah, we'll heat that up a little bit. I'll keep that lid on. In my opinion, there's nothing worse than a stir fry that has mushy overcooked vegetables. You need to have a little bit of that tender, crisp action so that, you know, oh, it yeah. tastes fresh. Yeah. It gives you that it's gotta fresh have feel. a little bit of that snap to it. Yep. going to uh, thin this out a little bit by adding some of the rice vinegar. Oh, rice vinegar. Rice vinegar. Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit tangy. Give it yeah. some... Uh, it's it's nice. It adds mm -hmm. a nice thing, but it also will thin out that sauce. Like the cornstarch is necessary to make it thick because you want that yeah. on your rice, but the sometimes it's a little bit too thick. Well, that's going to be just the right consistency. It's going to stick to the rice and the vegetables. And... Totally. Yeah. Might actually add some of these little guys now. All right, we're just going to add the rest of the meat back in, get it nice and hot, and then we're going to be ready to plate. Wow, that looks good. Yeah, that's a lot of nice meat in there. All right, let's plate this up. The rice is nice and light and fluffy looking. I mean, it's beautifully done rice. This is how we're going to plate this. Just got to hold that for leverage. All right. And lots of this. I'll get you some, whoops, I'll get you some extra sauce on here. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. The smell the ginger that's and good. this is how man, oh, man. I like to finish this off. A little bit of green onion. Little garnish. And these are just a little bit of sesame seeds. All right. You get to do the honors. Wow. Try it. Try a piece of the venison first. Definitely. Moment of truth. Mm. The vegetables still have the snap. It's still crisp. The rice, as I said, is light and fluffy, but the venison is just, I don't know how to describe the flavor. It's just, it's got so many different layers of flavor. It's just fantastic. Awesome. You've got to try this one at home. You have to try this. Well, I'm going to take this off camera and finish it. Thank you very much for joining us here on Line of Sight. Join us next week for more hunting action right here on Line of Sight TV.